Hello. Don't talk to me because you'll distract me, right? So before I start and before I get anywhere, I will address the elephant in the room. It has been a fucking rough year at Hogwarts, right? Can't deny that. You know, GCSEs are difficult and all that. But, you know, you, someone's got to make a living somewhere because we all, can't all have a more successful best friend. But uh, it's good, isn't it, this? All of us being sat together in a room. Is this all of us being sat together here in a room after the last few years we've had? Particularly, you know, with Mr. You went to stay at home and then you can't go out. You cannot go. <laughs> I don't know why he's Watto from Star Wars, but you know. <laughs> but, you know, what I've missed recently is uh, holidays. Not to hot countries, obviously. <laughs> but cold ones uh, are all right. But it's the airport that sort of gets on my nerves as well, particularly in the safety aspect. Now, I know initially that is quite, there's a lot of tension in the room here when I've said that. And I will only bask in it for a few more seconds before I get into it, right? You know when you go through customs and you're beeping items through and there's one thing they don't let you have. You go beep, beep, beep. You say yeah, like you know the rest of the joke. <laughs> but they, they take it out. You can't have this, sir. Or you'd be sat down because it's only a little man with probably no air. You can't have this, sir. What can't I have? This here, this weapon. What weapon? This inhaler. <laughs> I beg your pardon, this inhaler, you can't have it. It fires things out the end. It fires a gas that no one's ever heard of. That helps you breathe that isn't oxygen. What the fuck could it possibly do? But as if any terrorist, right? Because obviously we've had a few incidents in the past, but no, no one has been on a plane under threat that a terrorist is gonna just <laughs> get back fucking shoulder stripes, right? <laughs> yeah, or I'll clear your lungs, son, yeah? <laughs> Don't you, don't you mess with me, don't you mess it. <laughs> yeah, I'm the real deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> That's not usually how that joke's supposed to go. <laughs> I've never added that before. I don't think I'll be adding it again. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, so, good, so, obviously, I do look younger than the past people you've seen, and that's because I am, you know? I'm not like Ryan and Clark. I've not got a magical skincare routine. I was just <laughs> born later. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, right, so, I was born in 2006, meaning I'm 17 now, and I'm learning to drive. I did my theory test. Uh, I'm not... I'm, I'm not I'm not a make-a-wish kid, right? <laughs> I've not been brought in by the Avengers. I've been dropped off by someone in the room. Tony Stark is not outside, right? <laughs> but I did, did my theory test the other day. You take a provisional license in, and it's a very stressful thing. Not because it's an exam, but because the people in there are honestly make it so much worse. I went in, and there was this man behind the table talking about, like, Matthew Perry or something. God bless and shit. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I can't see you. It's a dark room with lights shining in my face. But whoever wooed then, <laughs> <laughs> brothers in arms, right? But and he evidently must have spotted me out of like his third eye in the back of his head. Just <laughs> you, you got your license. It's a funny way to say hello. <laughs> have you got your license? Yes, I've got my license. Hang on. There. Why do you need it? Just to make sure it's you. Now, my license is kept in my wallet. If someone else has got that license, they have also got my wallet. If they have taken that and their first instinct is, he could probably do with the driving test being done. <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't you worry about me, son. You let him take the test, okay? <laughs> right? So I gave him my thing and he went, go and put it in a locker over there. What, my license? No, I need the license. Go and put your phone in the locker. Fine, I'll put the phone in the locker. I went in to the room where you do it and this woman that looked a little bit like Pretty Patel was sat there and you could tell she was because honestly, the rigmarole I went through trying to get through the border, it was definitely her, <laughs> right? So I gave her this license. She said, take out your pockets. Right, I'll take out my pockets. Right. Why am I doing this? For the cameras. Not for you. No, for the cameras. Right, okay, fine. Take out your back pocket. 
I don't have a back pocket. Yes, you do. No, I don't. I'm in joggers. Take out your back pocket. Spot the, don't spot the back pocket because I've got them on this one, so I don't need any, <laughs> right, from chatty corner over there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> right? And then, once she'd realised that I had nothing in my pockets, she said, put your, th- put your hand through the middle pocket of your hoodie. That doesn't do anything because if I had something in my middle pocket, you can put your hand through without pushing it out because my hand is not hydraulic press. It doesn't just send everything, right? And then the, the best one was, show me your ears so I can see you've not got anything in them. <laughs> now, I've cut my hair recently. Be- before this, it was all covered my ears. Now, I feel like her eyesight wasn't the greatest. <laughs> because they're there. They're two holes. You don't look at the bath and think, I wonder if there's a plug in there. <laughs> when you've been running a tap and it's not full of water. Do you know what I mean? Like, there is nothing in the hole. And eventually, I sat the test, behave. Whoever went, oh, then, right. <laughs> Calm yourself down. This is not Magic Mike. This is, this is Majestic Mitchell, if anything. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> This is so much better than Blackpool. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) So, um, (laughs) you don't make not laughing any easier. (laughs) Right. But this isn't, obviously, doing this involves being a knobhead. Okay? It doesn't involve being confident or like that. And also, what also involves being a knobhead is my most recent real job, which was scare acting at Scare Kingdom at Mrs. Dowson's. Has anyone, did anyone go to that? Has anyone been to a scare acting place before? Okay, that made my life so much easier than Jesus Christ. I thought I was going to have to explain the concept of scare acting, which I feel is pretty (laughs) self-explanatory. But I did that for about a month, right? And the best bit about that is you can fully be a knobhead, right? I didn't have to be nice to anyone. And I don't know whether you've ever scared anyone before, like jumped out from behind the door. Obviously, people's first instinct is usually to go (laughs) and flap at you or say, get away, Terry, not again, right? But the, <laughs> the, the best ones are the ones that you scare and they give up straight away. Because some people will fight, some will make a comment, and you'll scare some and they'll go, I'm sorry. <laughs> or, I don't know, scaring someone to fall over after they've told their girlfriend they're not scared is the deepest and darkest pleasure I have ever ever felt in my entire life hearing this boy go oh you you go first you go first it's not that scary it's not that scary sending his girlfriend through letting her go and then coming around the corner and watching his feet fly about seven feet higher than his head as he fell on the floor underneath me in a mass that looked like bane from batman if he'd been described over the phone was (laughs) an immense feeling it was incredible to watch the humiliation on his face as he got up and dusted himself down and went. (laughs) (laughs) As though he hadn't just fallen over. (laughs) Absolute cinema. Right? And there was a part of this establishment. It was a shed in a farm, on farmland, but it was an establishment. Involved us chasing customers with chainsaws, which was whisk assessed, we took the chains off them. Not for the sake of the customers, for the sake of the fact it was a 16-year-old boy carrying said chainsaw. Which, imagine high school drama and how much better it would be if you did Macbeth with chainsaws. (laughs) (laughs) Come on then, witches. Burnham Wood ain't coming fucking nowhere. (laughs) Right? But there was a cage on our set. And this chainsaw-wielding massacre of an individual, this sadistic m- lover of this, came in in a stinking mood one night. And we said, what's up with you, mate? And he said, oh, no one was listening to me yesterday. Why? What did you try and get them to do? I tried to get them to get in the cage. How did you do it? Well, I, I pointed the chainsaw at them, and I forced them to do it. <laughs> now, run me through the thought process in which you go in, Oh, getting up for 
all came to hate stick it. Stop, stop crying. Get back, get back here and get in a fucking cage. What of that? It's going to work. <laughs> right? Now, you've been incredible, Liverpool, and I'm going to leave you with one more thing. And it's going to be slightly true, if you want to believe me. And it, this is somewhat from the past, you know, in the 70s, where dads weren't hands-on, but entertainers were. Um, <laughs> 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 <and> <laughs> <laughs> uh, it comes from the BBC, who are notorious for proving that previous statement <laughs> spot on, right? And for children in need, one year, which again, doesn't actually bode well for that transition. It makes me sound a bit dodgy, but I am under 18, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they had a challenge on one year in which a celebrity had to run up a big old skyscraper. And obviously in the 70s, there was one famous man who was very much up for helping children. And some of you will have guessed it already by the reaction there. And it's Sir, Sir, Sir... There we go. That was good, wasn't it? I'm like dynamo, mate. Just saying that, look, you, you and you. Right? And he had to run up this building, stand on the top and do a funny little dance and smoke his cigar. But the issue is it got struck off. Never, never happened. Never was on any TV records because of a copyright strike from a good old musical writer, which is where I started out and now I'm here. So fall from grace. But the title that they decided to put this on the TV guide and the catalogues with was uh, was Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> Didn't go very far. Now, that is that is the end of me. Thank you very much, Liverpool. Yeah.